Hello everyone. I welcome you all to this lesson. Today I am going to discuss on the topic the spider and the fly, which is written by Mary Potham Howitt. In this lesson, I will be discussing the important question and answers. So, children, listen carefully all the question answers, which will be helpful for you in your topic. in your lessons so let us start with the question and answers and before that let me ask you have you subscribed to my channel if you have not subscribed up till now then please do and watch the video till end and press the like button if you have liked my video and i'm sure you are going to like it as it will be beneficial for you in your studies and don't forget to hit the bell icon for my latest notification and yes please leave a comment which will be a source of motivation for me so now let us start with question number 1 my first question is describe the different ways in which the spider tried to persuade the fly to enter his parlor and the answer to this question is with a charming invitation into his home the spider is trying to entice the fly he describes his parlor as the prettiest and hence arouses a sense of inquisitiveness in the fly the description of his home as a mysterious wonderful place along with other details are added to arouse a fly's curiosity Having kept a close eye on the fly, spider tries a different tactics for this for his next move, pretending to be her sympathizer. The spider frets over how tired the fly must be after a day of intense flying. He goes far as to even offer her a respite from the day's activities. He even tries to win the fly's confidence by means of flattery by commenting upon the half flight saying soaring up so high the spider even proposes to personally tuck the fly the spider tries to manipulate the fly into feeling guilty for rejecting the numerous attempts of friendship he invites the fly to enjoy food stored in his pantry the spider heaps flattery on the fly by praising her wit and wisdom he says out the message that he acknowledges the fly being smart the spider begins to praise the fly's loveliness the gauzy wings and the brilliant eyes the spider speaks in a tone as if he was introducing the fly with her beauty of which she was unaware he again invites the fly to see herself in the looking glass question number 2 how did the fly resist the temptation of the spider and the answer is the fly wisely sees through the spider's deviciousness she was she is aware that the spider has eaten his previous guests clearly declining she tells the spider that asking her into his home is in vain for she knows that those who go through the winding stairs into his home never comes out the fly was alert to the perils of falling for the spider's flattery the fly turns down the spider's offer remarking on his evident ill repute as a host and the obvious fact that anyone who goes for a sleep over at the spider's parlor never wakes up again the fly politely remains firm on her stand and not fall prey to the spider she is not keen on him as a friend and keeps distance by turning down his repetitiveness repetitive invitations question number 3 Do you feel that the poem has any relevance to our lives? Give your views. And the answer is this poem reflects relevant trends 
of vanity and predations in today's society firstly many people are extremely caught up in their appearances they are vain about how they look and purchase products that claim to improve their beauty as we read in the poem this makes them more susceptible to flattery from evil people the news frequently has stories about victims lured to follow seductive strangers through flattery perhaps if these gullible people had been more attentive they would have avoided the danger to which they exposed themselves to sum up although the moral of the poem is universal and relevant to any time period it certainly reflects current trends to pervasive vanity in society and an abundance of people eager to take advantage of and prey upon the vanity of others question number 4 explain the theme of the poem the spider and the fly by mary howitt and the answer is the poem the spider and the fly is about an edgy conversation between two animals the spider and the fly in which the spider makes numerous attempts to persuade the fly into entering his house so that he may eventually trap her and dine on her howitt has herself stated this theme at the end of the poem on finishing the narrative of the poem the poet breaks from the poet poetic storytelling and offers up a warning as a moral to conclude in and now dear children who made this story read to idle silly flattering words i pray you'll never give heed unto an evil counselor close heart and ear and eye and take a lesson from this tale of the spider and the fly so this entire last stanza the theme is strongly displayed the weakness to succumb to flattery and false praise could be one's undoing if we consider how false words of flattery play on our ego coming us to embrace what could otherwise be disastrous the theme of limiting individual's pride becomes the driving theme of the poem the spider is successful in to weave a web to ensnare the fly because of the superficial praise heaped on it when the fly gives up to its praise believing it as truth the fly is destroyed thus people should not allow themselves to be manipulated by others who prey on their vanity the spider first tries to invite the fly into entering the spider's house by telling how comfortable his parlor is and how welcoming he is as a host initially the fly wisely resists the spider's attempts but she failed at resisting the spider's flattery as he praises her wings and eyes and offers her the chance to look into the mirror hence motivated by her great vanity the fly enters the spider's house and is entrapped into her fatal end thus people need to wary of others who flatter them only to deceive them my next question is question number 5 Describe the interaction between the spider and the fly in the poem The Spider and the Fly. And the answer is The Spider and the Fly has the qualities of a fable. It tells a tale which has a moral. The poem has been written to caution children about the dangers of vanity and of being susceptible to flattery. It can also be uh, be interpreted as a warning to women to be aware of men to exploit them exploit and manipulate them through flattery the poem progresses through the conversation between a spider and a fly interestingly the spider is a male and the fly is a female the fly is aware of the dangers of entering the spider's web it knows that 
those who enter the spider's parlor never come out. The spider uses several temptations to attract the fly. It first talks about its comfortable bed, which will help the fly to rest. He paints an attractive picture of his room, which has pretty curtains and fine sheets of bed. However, initially the fly is on her guard. She is aware that those who sleep in the spider's bed never wake up again. Understanding undeterred, the spider addresses the fly as a dear friend for whom he has a great love and affection. He tempts her with all the delicacies that he has in his store. She can step into her parlor and have a slice of anything that she likes. However, the fly can resist the fly can resist this temptation too. She firmly declares that she knows what he has in his pantry and that she has no desire to see what he has. The fly now moves to flattery from material temptations. He compliments the fly calling her witty creature to have a glimpse of her beauty and pretty and wise. He praises her gauze wings and her shining eyes. He asks her to step into his parlor to have a glimpse of her beauty in a little looking glass of, of his parlor shelf. The fly still refuses to be enticed. She thanks the spider for compliments and declares that she will have come another day. As she goes away, the cunning spider knows that this word will have an effect on her and she would return. To prepare for this, he weaves an intricate web in one corner of his tent. He sets his table in readiness. Then he comes out to the door again and begins to sing in a cheerful tone. He invites the fly to come flattering her on her beauty of her wings, her green and purple robes, the crest of her head. He compares her eyes to bright diamonds and his own dull lean. His flattery is such that fly loses good sense, forgets all the danger and walks into the spider's trap. Thus, Poet in the poem goes on to express his grief at the folly of the fly. He describes how the fly abandons all cautions and flies nearer and nearer to the dangerous web. She thinks only in the pretty words used by the spider. The spider, who has been lying in wait, catches her and drags her to his cell, from which she never comes out. The poem ends with a reminder to all of us, those who are innocent, gullible and unwary. The spider cautions them against paying attention to the words of false praise of danger people around them. Question number 6. With appropriate textual references, establish the spider and the fly as a cautionary tale for the native and the innocent. So the answer to this question is, the poem Spider and the Fly is about an apprehensive dialogue between a spider and the fly, in which the spider makes various attempts to trap the fly so that he could finally eat her. The spider is trying to allow fly with an invitation to his house. He calls her pretty in order to flatter her and make various comments just to make sure that she starts believing that they are very close. He also says that one shares secrets only with the close ones. On the other hand, the fly is aware of cruel intentions of the spider, but she refuses his offer at once. She also had an idea the spider has eaten the previous guests as well as inviting them into his house. And the fly, the spider did not give up. But this attempt, he entirely different move to the next time. He could be successful in his attempt to dine the fly. The spider told the fly that he was very sympathetic towards her because she has to go long distance flying in order to fetch food. So he wanted to give her a bit of breathing space and her daily chorus. He also tries to convince the fly, telling her about the flight 
saying soaring up so high so in this way he keeps on praising her the spider now he uses his flattery weapon when he sees that everything thing goes to an end the fly is not ready to accept anything so now he adopts another way of winning her the spider begins to praise the fly's loveliness the gauzy wings and the brilliant eyes the spider spoke in such a tone in which he was trying to make sure that the fly would feel that she would never that she had never heard of someone praising like that she he again invites the fly to see herself in the looking glass it was the opportune moment he needed the spider also called out the fly silly that shows the actual thought process of the spider about the fly he weaves the web with the help of conversation which was not noticed by the fly easily the quality of vanity becomes the reason for the downfall for the fly this expression alas alas becomes the poetic lament where one can only foresee the doom for the fly this poem gives a clear idea about the fly being flattered that resulted into her death at the last so no one should fall should not fall prey to the praise of the other people and this poem being as a cautionary tale for the native and the innocent question number 7 discuss the textual element and the artistic elements present in the poem the spider and the man the poem the spider and the man is about the spider who tries to trick a fly so that he can eat her by getting her trapped the spider applies various measures to trick the fly by showing his concern for her and flattering her with various compliments the purpose of this poem is to teach kids a lesson that they need to be careful who they trust whom they trust and whom they talk so that they do not fall into someone's trap textual element the idea communicated in the poem is that the spider makes various attempts to trick the fly so that he can eat her while the fly tries to resist the spider's trick the poem sets states how the spider and the fly try to carry out their own objectives with the one winning in the objective of over the other The setting of the poem is around and inside the spider's house as characters the spider as characters the spider and the fly are simple characters and do not have any layers the spider represents evil and the fly represents innocence the poem is narrated in third person form artistic elements the poem goes around the theme of dark humor even the hour of the day is perhaps night the spider states i'm sure you must be very dear with roaring up so high will you rest upon my little bed the line suggests that the fly might have roared up in the air throughout the day and must be tired after the day's excursion the spider probably does suggest the fly to take rest and relax her tired body the statement made by the fly they never never wake again who sleep upon your bed i have heard what's in your pantry and do not wish to see further the other lines in the poem so he wove subtle web in a little corner sly and set his t- table ready to dine upon the fly all these intents and the dark images along with the description of the spider's creepy house such as the the gory events that are to take place eventually it kind of gives it gives a kind of scary and gloomy feeling now question number question number 8 discuss the critical analysis of the poem the spider and the man and the fly and by mary howitt and the answer to this question is the poet mary howitt in the 19th century she has written this poem 
the spider and the fly is a cautionary fable that falls in the category of dark humor as most fables go to anthropom anthropomorphizes character to convey moral lessons which means enjoying a non-human character with human traits and behaviors for instance in the entire poem the spider is said to hold future features as in the normal human house we see a pantry bed mirror and stairs and so on these human touches these humans touches also serves the metaphors giving the poem an absurd reality that makes its moral lessons more memorable the poem is about a spider who is hungry he sees a fly and wants her to come over so that he can eat her he tries to trick the fly into getting trapped the spider begins with a charming invitation into his home yet this sociable chat is edged with a sense of mistress and danger that comes with the two characters the spider and the fly being natural predator and the prey the spider tries to arouse the fly's curiosity by explaining about the parlor in a mesmerizing look the spider attempts to trick the fly by feigning concern posing a sympathizer he pretends to fret over how tried the fly that may must be after a day of intense flying so by praising her so much so many times the fly ultimately comes into a into the parlor the hesitation from the fly are not outright falling for the spider's flattery in an insight the poet understanding on the human psyche it is a rare trait that people to change the stance of the opinion suddenly so as a result of which what happens the spider gets inside then the fly gets inside the spider's web and ultimately she is trapped by the poet by by the spider so in this way the this was the end of fly so children i have given you solution to eight questions now i am giving you some practice question which you should practice by writing the answers so my question number 9 is these are the practice questions what cordial invitation did the spider extend to the fly question number 10 the spider refers to its web as a parlor but later the narrator calls it a den Why is this so? Question number 11 Of the various offers made by the spider which one does the fly find most difficult to resist? Question number 12 What makes the fly change her mind and enter the spider's trap? Question number 13 What is fable? Why is the poem called a fable? Question number 14 What are the four ways in which the spider tries to lure the fly? Question number 15. Why was the spider sure that the fly will come back again? Question number 16. What is the advice given by the readers? Question number 17. Write the character sketch of the spider. Question number 18. What happens if we fall in prey to flattery given stances from the poem question number 19 describe the spider's parlor and the fly's appearance question number 20 who do you think is responsible for the end of the tragic tale and this is the end of my question so children i think these questions are enough for you and it will help you in your studies and go through all the question answer write these answers so that you are able to write in your exam very well so children here i end my lesson hope this lesson will be beneficial for you in your studies please like share and subscribe my channel hope i hope this lesson will help you in your studies thank you